La La Land blew a 3 1 lead. What's up? <laughs> Academy Awards post show for The Ringer. My name is Chris Hyde. This is Andy Greenwald. This is Amanda Dobbins. Holy shit! I cannot believe <laughs> what we just saw or what just happened. I had so many jokes prepared about how this was our big little lies <laughs> after show and they just went into the trash. I, mean, I, I sort of feel like I just had too many big little lies drinks and now I just like dreamed that. I literally don't know what just happened. I think that the people from La La probably feel the same way. On one, on the one hand, I can't believe this doesn't happen all the time. This has never happened before. But to the degree that the whole bit. We were sitting here being like, Warren Beatty has to make it about Warren Beatty. Yeah. That he was fumbling I mean, it's around almost, making I'm a joke. I'm almost glad that there was something that was actually confusing happening. Because yes. otherwise, I was just like, that's just like an awkward, dramatic bit. Can we walk through actually what happened yeah, here? Because okay. I was like sort of in my Twitter. And it, so he had the envelope. He looked at, he, he opened it. He looked at it for a really long time. He seemed confused and by seemed it. And seemed confused. Yes. And then handed it to Faye Dunaway, who just said La La Land. Because Correct. that was the but name then, of the movie on it. Yeah, that's understandable. La La Land goes through one or two producers speeches they're getting like they're really building up it's wrapping up Can and we then a guy say, just rushes yeah. the stage and self Kanye's yeah and is like oh my god Moonlight won I'm not joking and like Jimmy's out there like it was a like I mean so, in, a, in a year of like all these moments I can't believe this stuff keeps happening this wait, but, is very weird so Warren was given the wrong envelope he was given the envelope that said Emma Stone won best actress but how did that happen well someone and did Emma Stone not win best fired. actress where does the scandal oh end <laughs> holy <laughs> shit <laughs> Who won right Best Actress? <laughs> Isabelle Huppert right now is calling all of her agents <laughs> and the Agence France press. Look, a couple things to say here. Wait, One of which I is... Say, like, this is not supposed to happen specifically for the... Wait, did they not do the Price Waterhouse moment tonight? They did not do that. Oh my god. They, so we're, we're wow. the envelopes Holy not shit. There this were a couple things the Chris that broke right now. from tradition tonight. For example, they did not do the thing where people sketch the costumes, and then they come to life and the beautiful forms they of the They did not actors. have a parody montage in the beginning that celebrated La La Land, but also had musical bits about they, Lion. They know. did not have actors introduce, this is Lion. Right. They broke with a lot of tradition, including <laughs> announcing the wrong movie. Can we say, though, in the spirit of generosity that was shown on stage, the La La Land speeches and all of it were quite nice, very appropriate, They handled it about generous. as well as you can handle something that if you were working for almost the better part of yeah. a year to get something like this. <laughs> You're yes. standing and up in front like, of everyone. Nah, you yeah. wore a lady and Faye Dunaway happen. bricked it. Yeah, Bonnie and Clyde Yes, <laughs> all these people are coming up, life. you guys got to get off. That's, I can't believe that that just happened. It's like the epitome of you had can, one job. Can we talk you about- You had one job. Can we talk about the strangest thing? Stranger than that? Moonlight, probably the best picture of the year, just one best picture. I know, I'm of not even there yet. I was just thinking, I'm still so like, holy shit, what happened that I have not gotten to the part where the best movie of the year won. We did it. Right. That's insane. We didn't do it. It's but insane. We didn't do it. I, I did nothing. I just sat here. But. It's insane to me. We tweeted a couple times. It's true. Uh, <laughs> There's something very interesting about this, just in so much as, like, first of all, that, like, you can't count on anything anymore. You know what I mean? You can't, like, no. something that is so stage managed as the Oscars that that could have that kind of possibility for chaos is so wild. Like, how did that envelope get in his hands? We, I'm not trying to go, like, full, uh, like, Kevin I Costner know. and JFK here, but, like, show me the film. I want to see the, the tape. At least go Kevin Costner and Hidden Figures. Yeah. And at least just direct <laughs> this and get us to a better place. I mean, look, the people have been saying for a while that the only reasons to have a TV, basically, now uh, plugged in, like, not to be a cord cutter, yeah. are live events. Sports and particularly, particularly sports, but also award shows. The Super Bowl was an example of, okay, well, I guess that's why we do it, right? Because right. the impossible right. can happen right. and nothing is scripted. Award shows, actually, the ratings have been going down, maybe because people aren't liking what's being awarded, but also because maybe stuff like this doesn't happen. We were preparing jokes about how we were going to officially be hour nine of the broadcast. This all happened at 12.10 a.m. on the East yeah. Coast. All hell broke loose. I it's also, crazy. this is terrible because, you know, in sports writing, there's this whole thing where it's like you're writing a gamer during the yeah. game. Oh, and then you and turn you get to the ninth yeah, inning you or whatever, yeah. and you're just like, oh, no. Yeah. This is that, man. Like, everybody who's writing, you know, about the Oscars has to tear it up. And now they all have to become, like, forensic scientists about how envelopes get passed. And another point, Jimmy Kimmel seemed kind of actually upset at the end. Like, he had screwed it up and well, felt bad about it. for those. He yeah. just hosted the most legendary Oscars of all time. All of that is going to be remembered far longer than a lot of these movies. It's almost weirdly like because he's such a prankster, I I just didn't get it for a second. I thought maybe that guy worked for Jimmy Kimmel or something. Yeah, I didn't understand who. Well, first of all, it, when you win Best Picture, don't let the producers 
except it's because I had no who, idea who that guy was who was award. holding an Oscar and was yeah. like, hey, Moonlight won, I'm not joking. And I was like, who the hell are you? I've never seen you before. I, 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 Is this part of the Jimmy Brigade? All the, sh all the credit, though, to that La La Land producer whose name I'm forgetting, maybe someone will say in your ear, who, as you guys have said, I mean, he had one job. Like, yeah. He's a producer of this film, and his job for the last two months, other than to count the money, which is sure. outrageous, has been to give these speeches as they win. And this was everything. He was speaking for them, everyone who had been a part of it, everyone in the cast, Giselle, the movie, and then to go immediately into it and immediately say, like, my friends deserve this, I would like to give it to them. He deserves a lot of credit. It, it actually was something in action that you don't see because for all the talk, usually Oscars in general are industry awards. People on the stage are always saying, I'm part of this beautiful community. I'm so honored to be with right. people. Actors are always saying, first I want to say my fellow nominees. And then also everyone behind the scenes and on their couches are like, this is bullshit. This is a town, of, this is a, a, a land of wolves now, right? Yeah. Actually, that guy, especially I an independent the guy, film, the producer guy who did that actually had the face of like an actual Hollywood producer, which was like, yeah. I'm going to keep a straight face yes. while I do this, and then I'm going to light someone on yeah. fire as oh. soon as this. Okay, so when we were coming into this, we were going to do what stood out. Obviously, yeah. the fact that two friggin' movies, one best picture, stood out. So let's kind of try and, and, and retcon this a little bit. Yeah. Who had the best night? And I don't really, and it's definitely not the dude from Price Waterhouse or whatever <laughs> guy was like, I'm handing the envelope to Warren Beatty. Warren Beatty had a pretty good night where he got to come back on the mic and be like, Shout out to Boar! Wasn't my Lit fault. Nice one. You guys thought I'm senile, but no, you literally screwed me up here. Um, I, I think it's That'd hard. That'd be great if he was like, That's for Ishtar. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, just, just the double birds and walk off stage. <laughs> Um, you know, back when things were normal 10 minutes ago, I was going to say that I thought Mahershala Ali had the best night for a couple of reasons. One, because he deserved to win, but mainly because he won the first award. He could just enjoy the, the juju yeah, he was just sure. for the rest totally. of the night. That's always yeah. the greatest yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Also, he's Mahershala Ali. And so. his life's pretty decent yeah, anyway. Going and for him. he's definitely going to be a big movie star now. But I would say, I guess, Barry Jenkins. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I don't see how that's not the case. Yeah. I mean, he already, I would have, there's a case to be made for him anyway, because his speech for um, adapted screenplay, a very deserved win, was a beautiful and impassioned speech and one of the best of the night. But he made this movie. Yeah, we talked about he this made, in the pre-show. It's a million dollar movie. Yeah. It is a, and it is a beautiful, beautiful, gentle, kind thing. I mean, I, this movie is a very beautiful film. And it is the kind of movie that no one thought would win because we would all say to ourselves, we know it was good. Right. It's going to last. Right. Uh, Amanda, who do you think one? had like a great night? Who I mean, I was going to say Barry Jenkins I, at this point. Sorry. I guess, no, it's fine. I can't, I can't honestly remember anything that happened before midnight tonight. <laughs> yeah. which I, like, it's just totally been washed from my brain. Um, before, I, I mean, my answer is so stupid. I was going to say Matt Damon. I don't give a shit about the Matt Damon bits now. And I would like, I liked watching it them. Was such a long Oscars. I can't believe that like it's 30 seconds of insanity and then it's gone. It was, yeah. we sat here for such a long it's, time it's also, and chipped away at takes. Yeah. We were just like carving. I can feel it still going on. Like yeah. they're boiling in the press room right now. Like I honestly think we should send someone out on like Hollywood Boulevard and just be like, what's Where's going that on? Bus? Are I those know. people just like, are, are they, they still okay? there? What if they did it? Yeah. 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 What if Gary did we do yeah. background checks? Seriously, yeah. who got pranked I now? I was going to say my, my person who I thought had the best night in a weird way was Ryan Gosling because I do think that there is a right. jack-sized hole at the Oscars oh, yeah. of someone who can just regularly Nicholson. bring charisma. Nicholson yeah, Nicholson-sized hole. Uh, who can just regularly bring, bring charisma and uh, a happy to be thereness and a sort of Hollywood family vibe where always they're just like, ready. yeah, mm -hmm. it, 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 always ready a, for the cutaway. If there's a bit, sure. I'll do it. If there's a cutaway, I look great. I can present. I can. I could pr practically co-host. And I thought Gosling did a really good job in all of those aspects and was a graceful loser. He was never going to win. It was yeah. always between Denzel well, and Casey. He had the easiest the job actor. tonight no matter so what. So I just thought he had a really nice night. I mean... Can I jump in and say, I disagree that he's the new Jack. I think Meryl Streep's the new Jack. Meryl Streep, front row. Everyone talks to her, bows to her. She's yeah, always ready for a little look or a face. That's true. She's yeah. down for the I jokes. Just, she I can defeat think Carl they, they need somebody who's like a little she, bit. She defeated Carl younger, Lagerfeld. Yeah, she defeated Carl Lagerfeld. I just think that God's like appeals to a younger generation in a certain way. But I don't, maybe I maybe I could be wrong. Would you like to speak to a member uh, of a generation? generation of, like a man does not there. Uh, hello. <laughs> Actually, for me, I think in many ways the winner of the night were those of us here in the studio who got to watch Amanda's face during Ryan Gosling's face on the screen when Emma Stone won. Yeah, yeah that was really nice. Was I was going to say, my top three moments are Ryan standing up to greet the sad tour bus yes. people. Well, let's get into the Oscar yeah. superlatives then and our best crowd reaction of the night, which I think I didn't get, we didn't get a crowd reaction. We had Taraji P. Henson Snapchatting that insane moment where there, there's like this handoff of 
of Best Picture winners. Mm -hmm. We didn't really get much of a cry. I'll have to go back and check the team. Let me do something for you and let me see whether you recognize what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Nicole. Yeah. Do you know what Nicole, this is? Nicole Kidman. What is this? Nicole yeah. Kidman. Why are we clapping clap. like this? I know. <laughs> Nicole, Nicole Kidman had a weird night all around. Yeah. I would say. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, she apparently knows the words to, to the Trolls song. She was very excited. She yeah. and her musician husband Keith were very excited about Justin Timberlake's opening. Um, is Lion really a movie? Did anybody see it? Did you yeah, see I it? Yeah. Like Lion. Yeah. Lion's a real movie. Are we yeah. sure? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I, I just want. <laughs> look, was that, just, is that your best crowd I'm reaction for a friend? Oh, I, I don't. You I, just freestyle it. I'm just, I'm just riffing here. You're playing a little jazz. I, I am. Oh wow. Um, Amanda, who did you think was the most prepared tonight? Um, let's see. I mean, no one, not me. What <laughs> yeah. the fuck? That's not, all gone out the not window. Not the Oscars. Yeah, like, not, not the Oscars. Yeah, not anyone behind the scenes. Um, you know, I think Emma Stone and Viola Davis both seemed to know that they were. Gonna, I, Viola's speech was the loveliest of the night. I yeah. thought. Um, but the Moonlight screenplay speech I thought was really excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think anyone, no one just read from a piece of paper. Right. Which was nice. Except the letter from the Iranian director. Yes. Uh, oh, Asad that, Farhadi, yes, correct. Which was pretty terrific. Yeah. But that was a great I, moment. I think the most prepared person of the night was Denzel Washington. And what I mean was, there are two Denzel Washingtons. There's the one who's ready to play along, the one who's not really ready. To, yeah. The one who doesn't want to play anymore. Mm -hmm. All during award season, and we talked about this in our preview podcast, Denzel was ready to play along. Yeah, he, was, he, he turned on the charm. He wanted this one. And uh, he, to the degree that when uh, Jimmy Kimmel brought in the bus full of people, he was, he was, ready, to, he was ready to play. He was, he was first it, one it, on the front line. As a, you know, to back up your two sides of Denzel, when the bit was over, he was like, like and now I'm out. Like, <laughs> He's like, yeah. Much like he was on the evening when he didn't win Best Actor, because his face... Well, before we get any further, I do want to say that we are taking your questions, which I assume will yeah. just be an assemblage of exclamation points and maybe question some marks. Maybe emojis. And maybe, yeah, maybe some WTF emojis. But, you know, any questions you have, facebook.com slash ringer, yeah. twitter.com slash ringer, and we'll be happy to answer those. You can also hit us up at our various Twitter handles if you have them. Amanda. Yes. Best tears. Viola. Yeah. That was really moving. Um, and one of those things where... She, was def she performed the shit out of that. And I don't mean that in a way of like it was fake at all. It was just that is, a, she has a presence. Yeah. She's an actress for a reason. She's one of our greatest actors. Exactly. And yeah, I thought There's that was a, pretty There's an moving. acceptance speech thing that happens. Like I, I remember like McConaughey for Dallas Buy Buyers Club. It felt like he was like trying to act yeah. shocked at the circumstances at every award show over the course of award season. Whereas Viola, awesome, I think, yeah. had like, is like a ascending emotional peak that she had maintained over. So it was like, it was kind of cool. I mean, I was... I was so happy for the reconnaissance, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. you can get caught in the rut of being like, well, here it yeah. is. What amazing times that we live in. That was my Makani. That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You can work on it. But, but we also see people choose to do different things at different award shows. And, you know, in our pre-show tonight, we were saying Mahershala Ali, if he wins, you know, we're expecting a firecracker of a political speech after what he gave at the, I think, was that the SAG Awards? Yes. Um, tonight, he was just simply... Human. He was just like, he was just talking about the people that he wanted to thank yeah, and he was people very that matter to him and his family like and his new daughter and, and that was in many ways just as effective. Um, it was just a different thing. Um, my favorite tears were uh, uh, La La Land songwriter Benj Pasek's mother when he shouted out shouted her out for letting him quit the soccer team. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like I, I like a little back and forth of the crowd and the camera was ready for it. Yeah. And I thought that was very sweet. Uh, Amanda, who did you think was the? And I, yeah, I'm just turning to you, Adam. A deference here, but who Thank do you think you. was best dressed today? Uh, Taraji wins for me. Okay. Taraji Henson looked just amazing. Um, out of the winners, I liked Emma Stone's dress. I was, I was, I liked the flapper thing. You, you disagree? I, she was my pick. I completely agree. Uh, I realized that I am not listing any men here, but uh, it's okay. You haven't listed Alicia Vikander yet either. Oh, she looked. She did look great. Yeah. The tan was a little extreme, but I figure that's Tomb Raider. How yeah. dare you? Look, <laughs> I'm here to just be honest, you know? I that's, always that's enjoy you your thoughts on fashion. Do you have any thoughts? Um, the guys, I mean, I think you mentioned something about navy blue suits seem to be a trend. Yeah, but then you were just like, that's not happening. Well, so, I, we also discussed whether you were colorblind right. or not. So I, I it, don't think I'm colorblind. <laughs> I honestly thought that there were navy blue suits. I am but, now. Okay. Like, now everything is upside down. Black I know, all right. Um, Andy, what was the, like, this is great, because I have this written down, what was the biggest surprise? Um, let's oh, well. take it yeah. out of... They got Best Picture wrong. Yes. What's the biggest surprise? Well, the biggest surprise, um, well, there's two. I mean, I, I think in a minute we're going to talk about the show as a show. And yeah. I was actually surprised with how the show went as a TV show. But 
In terms of as an award show, the biggest surprise, and obviously this was only um, exponentially increased by the end, was that La La Land didn't dominate. Um, yes. Y I mean, you... We were starting to get, like, th here's the thing. That La La Land had such a, a huge swath of nominations and was up for, could have tied the record, I believe, if it had won all of them with, be with Ben Hur. Yeah. You know, and it wound up, once there was, like, one Hacksaw Ridge win... Which Chris Stradamus here predicted. Well, I just had insane. a bad... I, not a bad feeling. I had a feeling that there was a silent contingent of Mel Gibson voters out there and that he might win some weird comeback the, director. The deplorables, if you will. No, I didn't say that. I, I just mean, like, I just think that, like, there was, like, a weird feeling that, yeah. like, something could go wrong here. But yeah. I thought it would not be wrong. I mean, something could go out and, that was unexpected. And as those technical awards started to go to different places instead of just La La yeah. Land, and as it just seemed like the yeah. stability of, the, of, of La La Land was he, falling away he, a Here's bit. what I think happened in, to some degree. I think we, we, and I mean anyone who comments on this stuff, misread the nominations. And what I mean is, obviously it got, it tied, the, you know, it tied other movies for the most nominations ever, 14 nominations. But what that actually meant, now that we've seen how they played out, was that La La Land was pretty good at a lot of things. It did not mean it was so far and away the best at everything. Yeah. You know, I actually think, and you know, I like to joke about the movie and I didn't love the movie at all, but it, it won the appropriate awards almost. You right. know, it won, it is, a, it's a musical, I don't really like the music in it, but of course it would then win the music categories if it was a popular film. Emma Stone was tremendous in it. The movie was beautifully directed. Damien Chazelle won. I think, in a weird way, the, the result was actually quite fair and, and even-handed. But, you know, it, it, it was, to use a sports analogy, which I believe is appropriate, we have the dream team looking at us, it filled up the stat sheet, you know, but it, yeah. didn't, it didn't dominate. And I think that, that and, I, and I think everyone immediately assumed, because it had those nominations, that it was Ben-Hur or Titanic. And in fact, it wasn't. It was just a well-made across the board film. Um, we have a, a really good uh, question here from Tyler Andier from Facebook who says, what does Moonlight wi the Moonlight win mean for the Oscars as an institution? Is this the beginning of a major change for what gets awarded and made moving forward? Um, that's a good cue. I think it's actually secretly a two-part question because right. you have the entire question of like institutionally, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. You know, how did you not right. have a certain safeguard in place where there's only one envelope for one award and there is nobody who's standing. I mean, did Emma Stone hand off her envelope but, to somebody? But, but I thought you meant like, how did it happen? How did Moonlight win? Well, but I think that in some ways Moonlight is, I mean, it's, it's a, a phenomenal victory, but it, it's, I think that there is just a lot of variance that can happen in the Oscars now. We have not right. had a complete lock, just like, just sweep of an Oscars winner in a while now, right? No, it's, you know, it's kind of been split up between the best picture, the acting, and the technical yes. films that kind of are three different blocks mm -hmm. at, yeah. at this point. Which is actually reflective of how movies get made. Yeah. Because the, tech, the, the movies, you know, I mean, Passengers got two nominations. It was a $300 movie that tanked, but it was, they, the, the technical stuff looked good. Typically right. what happens is best picture contenders. Mm -hmm. And the reason why a lot of these movies, and we talk about them for so many right. months, is that they are in telling a story, like not the story of their film, but the story within their film, but the story right. around their film, right? It's like La La Land is a return to this musical and it's about dreams. And Moonlight is about, you know, like th this idea that a film that's outside of the mainstream of what Hollywood exactly. usually makes could be this huge best picture right. contender. Did you feel like Moonlight had somehow, I, don't, I mean, did it gain any momentum over the last few weeks? I don't even know. You know, I sort of have the secret theory that the Academy voters actually pay more attention to the narrative around, you know, how we're talking about things. I don't want to say they read film Twitter, and I don't think that we should give film Twitter that credit, right. but that they are paying attention to, to the sentiment. conversation. Yeah, 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 and sentiment. And I think that they were, the La La Land backlash and sort of, you know, the, just kind of the it's okay sure. sentiment about La La Land. I think that people, I think voters were possibly more aware of that. And more aware of the notion that Moonlight was a very, very special film at a time when we like when we need a film like Moonlight. I, I think I agree, and I think a couple things. One, I think La La Land backlash. I think that's film Twitter. I think what I experienced, and what I think a lot of other people probably experienced, Oscar voters especially when right. they received the screeners, is that they were excited to see something great, and they saw something that was fine. Exactly. That's not a backlash. That's actually watching the movie and being able to separate, well, Emma Stone is great and the ambition is great. And my feeling with that movie, my main criticism is that I think it's a very young movie. I think that Damien Chazelle is very young. I think the emotions in the movie are very young. And I think he could make a great movie worthy of 14 nominations. Which is 10 strange because, spoiler alert, it doesn't end 
in terms of like the traditional reasons no. why you would like a movie like La La Land, it ends on a bittersweet note. It's not. I mean, in some yeah. ways, it's yeah. him. It's like a, like it's almost like a first breakup movie. I see nothing wrong with marrying the guy from that thing you do. But to your other question about Moonlight. Um, we saw Cheryl Boone Isaacs with the president of the Academy um, up on stage, and it is no secret, it's been reported on, she has done a lot of work behind the scenes to broaden the membership of the Academy and to make sure things like last year's uh, nominations don't happen again, to make sure movies like Moonlight specifically get seen. Yeah. And so she's, she's increased the diversity of the voting block, which had a hu made a huge difference. But I also think this does come down to the fact that a lot of the Academy voters are older, and a lot of the Academy vo voters wait for their screeners to come in, and then they watch them. Yeah, based on and, those Hollywood Reporter mm -hmm. secret ballot articles, that's exactly right. And so I think a bunch of them you know, knew about Manchester by the Sea, for example. And by the way, fantastic that Kenny Lonergan won. But they, they heard about that movie. They got it in the mail. And like many people were like, this is a tough hang. Like, I don't know when I'm ready to clear out space for this one. And I think probably a lot of them considered Moonlight with the same trepidation. Like, this is going to be a tough one. This is an important film. This is here because of diversity or something sort of cynical like that. And then you put it on. And it's very beautiful, and it's very affecting. And it's not a hard watch. It's actually quite a transporting watch. And I think that was reflected in what we saw tonight. Got a couple of other uh, questions from the audience. Uh, James Hardingham from Facebook wants to know, who will have a better career now, Barry Jenkins or Damien Chazelle? Oh, interesting. Um, right now we know Barry Jen uh, Damien Chazelle's next film is a Neil Armstrong movie with Ryan Gosling. Yes. I don't know what Barry Jenkins' next movie is, or if he has lined one up yet. He, I, I believe He's Sean Fantasy said a that TV he has the, show, right? well, isn't he doing something with Colson Whitehead's The, the Under, oh, uh, right. Underground right. Railroad yeah. book? Yes. I don't know if that's a film or a TV project. but I don't know about better. I, I mean, Barry Jenkins can do whatever he wants from now on, yeah. I think. Um, and I, you have to sort of assume that the way in which La La Land lost is going to... Uh, in general, like a lot of sympathy for Damien Chazelle also, in a way that I think they're both going to be fine. That's why Damien Chazelle won Best Director It's true, Oscar. but he, I mean, yeah. then yeah. he literally had to stand up on the stage and have yes. the Best Picture taken away from him. That is just humiliating. There's no other way to spin that. So I, I think... <laughs> By the way, if Harvey Weinstein had produced La La Land, they would not have left the <laughs> Yeah. He would have literally been like, no, you gave it to us, we are there. keeping it. Yeah. Like, that would have been intense. Another question from the audience. Hong Shang wants to know... Uh, what would what was the most memorable movie of 2016? Uh, the, the 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 last five minutes of the Oscars. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I, Moonlight I think was the best movie I saw. Uh, we I mean, we've talked about other movies we, on our podcast. We talked about how you know Arrival we found affecting, yeah. and interesting mm -hmm. about what it means going forward for movies and for cinema. Um, Weird, I think the right movie. What, 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 what were your I other think, favorite films of the year? I mean, I can just answer. I think about Moonlight a lot. I think about Arrival a lot, especially the last 20 minutes of Arrival. I live in Los Angeles, and I moved here a year ago, so I think about La La Land, especially when I'm coming over that one part of the, the 10 or whatever. Sure, and, you, and you hear that piano. Um, yeah, you know, it just starts up. Do, 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 do. Um, Manchester, I, I think, I mean, I hope people don't have to think about it that much, but it does speak to us particular experience in life in a really beautiful way. It, that, that one scene with Michelle Williams yeah. and Casey Affleck, I do think about I, th I think I think that's yeah. one of the best acted scenes I've ever seen in any medium. I, but I think also, let's just take a moment to say, like, Kenneth Lonergan will get to make another movie. Barry Jenkins will get to make mm -hmm. another movie. Yeah. Dam Damien Chazelle will get to make another movie. Also, people are not going to forget this Oscars anytime soon. This I mean, Colin has a, has a question for us about whether or not there, I mean, to paraphrase this question, is like to the extent to which there's going to be like an asterisk over this victory. It's not an no. asterisk. And the cool thing about this Oscars is I think that going into this award show, we were all kind of like, of this crowd of movies, probably... Moonlight, Manchester, and La La Land all deserve something. They yeah. all deserve some Super, recognition yeah. for I mean, La La Land's been a huge box office success. It was definitely a much more appreciated movie before the backlash started. Manchester is an incredible work of, of, of drama, and Moonlight is, is obviously the best picture and is by far the most beloved movie I've come across in terms of Absolutely. the people I know who like how they feel about a film. Yeah. They it, all got something to go home with. It, it was a remarkably generous uh, allotment of awards and and that's something you don't usually see you know and and I think that sort of speaks weirdly to the night as a whole I mean it did there was about an hour about an hour into it we were sitting here saying wait why does this feel kind of peppy and kind of fun and it you know there were surprises 
I thought Kimmel was really funny. We could talk about the, the the show as the show. I mean, up to the last thirty seconds, if you want. Yeah, yeah. because what I, what I what we were commenting on, especially, was that we, we felt like they had cut a lot of the fat that every year we make fun of them for having. You know, the, the just well, the it just of, wasn't trying this, too hard. The self-referential, yeah. like this is why comedies make us laugh. Let's remember what movies are. And I always used to say, like, movies, your movies, act like you've been there before. You know, and this year it seemed to. And then we ran right into that brick wall of Charlize Theron watching. Uh, the apartment, which paid off with we bought a zoo. So <laughs> that's I'm not true. Even mad I liked that. both. All, I liked all the people in the you movie theater. You guys, you guys love the bits. You want to talk about? I bits? do. I mean, I just like I am a sucker for montages. I'm a sucker for people who make movies talking about movies. I love the movies. I love celebrating the movies. I I just love all that stuff. So Javier Bardem being like, I love Bridges of Madison County. I'm like, yes. I would listen to Javier Bardem talk about the four yeah. miracles of acting yeah. for like the entire, for three hours, for the whole ceremony. Just you know, do that next year. I think a lot of people expected a very politically charged Oscars, and it certainly, there certainly were politics present. But in, in a strange way, the, the tone set by Mahershala Ali's speech carried through, mm -hmm. that it was actually a very um, almost inward looking and emotional ceremony in a lot of ways. It felt like a community. Um, and it felt, you know, the, all, all of the talk about the importance of the arts and of art in mm -hmm. these people's lives and in everyone's lives around the world actually didn't feel that cynical to me. Plus, it had the little acid that you needed from Jimmy Kimball, who I think was an excellent host for one major reason that separated him from even other good hosts. He called out movies for being bombs. You're not allowed to do right. that. Where you just make he, fun of the Great Wall. Yeah. You know, and I mean, he did it all yeah, at Damon, yeah. which obviously he was in on and is a good sport about. But he basically, he made fun of the Great Wall being an 80, you know, a ponytail movie that lost $80 million. He made fun of We Bought a Zoo just like, just peppering it like a Vicious. speed bag. Um, you're not supposed to do that. And that helped cut some of the sanctimony. I want to ask about major takeaways as we wrap this up. I, I have to tell you guys, as we are sitting here, you just want to check Twitter? I want to watch. No, I do. No, I no, no. Like I don't want to just. I, I have. I have a really bad feeling that this was like, like a, like a staged thing. Like that. That there was not. That almost. I have like a bad feeling that there's gonna be like. Yeah. Like it was a mistake, but like it was a mistake. Like. It, they, what does a mistake mean? Because you mean, like, I just feel like they people are gonna to talk about the Oscars for weeks now. You think it's, it's gonna be like Benghazi or no, something? No, no, no. I just mean like. Let's it's just, investigate that. No, I just mean like it's like. There's something about this that it's like, how could that possibly happen? And that is the takeaway. And it's almost a shame because it is almost going to overshadow Moonlight winning. It's just because that's what people are going to talk about. But do you, are you ascribing some ulterior motive? Like, do you think that because the Oscar's so white last year that Moonlight had to win? No, and there was no, 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 no. I'm saying, like, there's no way. I just want to know whether or not there was, some, there was like, I, this is crazy. No, you know what? As I'm saying it, I think no, it sounds No, can I say wild. one thing, though, which I, I, I do think that the last 30 seconds are going to overshadow the fact that Moonlight won. Right. And I think also just the fact that, you know, they didn't get the chance of Moonlight and, uh, you know, everyone going up in that moment. It was a very rushed. Yes. I, like, I don't know how you fix that, but I personally, as, a, as someone who likes awards shows and likes people having their moment... I, like I wish we could stage the actual presentation again. Also, I just and let can't Barry Jenkins even imagine actually... what the La La Land folks were feeling. I do feel bad for them. Yeah. They're, like they're all, they'll survive. As like as somebody who just is like, oh, like, it's hard for me to watch Curb Your Enthusiasm because I cringe yeah. at no, stuff. It's, you know, yeah. it's like that must have been like a real L. Look, I mean, it's a movie about uh, not having the ending you really want, but maybe the ending wow. you need. <laughs> And so maybe they all learned a lesson. Now you tonight. should tap dance for me. I would be willing to, <laughs> as long as we could play the music in here. Uh, what a um, crazy. Movie. Okay, so. We just got a message from Colin backstage via the New York Times. Yeah. That Emma Shut Stone up. says. I'm sorry, I just read your Slack. This is crazy. I'm right. Say I'm it. right. Where's my tinfoil hat? I was right. Emma Stone said she had the best actress Stop. card in her hand the whole time. So how did it get back? To well, so it was the a stage? Printing, some sort of printing error, or they like doubled it up or something. It wasn't the same card. So it's Kinko's. It's Kinko's. It, which I believe is now FedEx Kinko, so it spread the blame around. <laughs> there is literally on the internet this Zapruder tape of where the envelope was going during yeah, the they award ceremony. The he opened a new envelope. That was clear. But what was weird, remember, is he took it out and he like looked on the back because it didn't make sense to him. So and they so we thought he was like two, didn't like what but it said. Who had the who had the moonlight envelope? Well, the, my my assumption here is that they that guy, the producer for La La Land, was like Moonlight One. I'm not joking. They but, showed the card. Yeah, but they literally Warren showed. Beatty had Emma Stone's card, so there no, were three I, cards. Well, I think there were three. I think there were three cards. I think there were two Best Actress cards. I mean, we're going but off the deep end here, but, but I think, where did the Moonlight card that they how showed did that in guy the come shot? Running up, how, who, who gave had it to that? Him? That I don't understand. It, 
That I don't understand. Maybe do, uh, we do we, answers do, the we do we sound nuts? Like, is it, do we sound like we're in the bookstore in Slacker? Someone in the booth send us the craziest. <laughs> there are three right envelopes. Now. Okay, is that what I'm saying? <laughs> Are we saying there's three envelopes? Part of this. There's an Emma Stone envelope that is... Emma Stone never got left her hands. There's an Emma Stone envelope that Faye Dunaway read off of. Yeah. And then there is a Moonlight envelope that the producers and... from La La Land had. And there's the fourth envelope that said the Knicks have the number one pick in the draft. <laughs> and it's cold. It's a cold envelope. Yes. Sports and pop culture this coming together. This is what together. we do. It's our business. I got it. I got the joke. Yeah. We, yeah. we work together. Right? Um, <laughs> it's here. Man, I don't even know. Yeah, it, it, this is not over. This is the thing. It's just beginning. I mean, I, I feel like the you know the the, the, the governor's ball or the Vanity Fair ball, like yeah. these parties are going to be kind of lit now in a way that they. I mean, can you aren't. imagine? Can you imagine like just like being at a bar? David Chazelle already looked like he hadn't slept in three weeks. I mean, there are a couple things to say here though. Like it would be unimaginably worse if it had been the reverse. And I say this oh, because... I honestly man. can't even imagine For that. For a number of reasons, obviously the racial overtones and the political overtones of it, but also uh, David and Goliath here. Yeah. Because the thing to remember about La La Land, 14 nominations, yes, it won plenty tonight. What was the number that Sean gave us in the podcast? $350 million worldwide yeah. already? And Moonlight cost one million and made. I think it's up. I think it did quite well considering what it what it was. But yeah, it's not comparable. It's going to do pretty well now it, for it, sure. I mean, it, it, this it, is it, purely thing. in the sense of commerce in terms of people being right. angry about that. Moonlight needed it more than La La Land. So needed it. really quick to send us out. Your one big takeaway from the day. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Literally, what the fuck? Like, bring me a tinfoil hat too. I'm actually my big takeaway aside from you can't trust anything and that there were three envelopes is that. This is great for Moonlight. A lot of people are going to go see sure. it now. I'm thrilled about that. My, my main takeaway is, Colin, you were right. We should have done a live show tonight. Right? That <laughs> is definitely the right call. You know, I know I was on the fence for a little bit. I was a little bit of a diva. I demanded some lumbar support. Yeah, but... Andy, uh, thank you again to the Black Tux for dressing me. And Andy, uh, Andy tonight, um, thank you, Amanda and Andy, for joining me. Thank, thank you, Amanda, you to for the bringing crew, this. As always, Monsters on the Beats. We appreciate coming it. Coming through Sunday night. But what a Sunday night. <laughs> we will be back on The Watch this week. We're going to use some of the audio you just heard. Uh, yeah, you'll be able to hear this uh, on a podcast tomorrow on The Watch. Uh, and yeah, we'll be talking about this. Nothing like the movies, it's guys. crazy. Nothing like the movies.